Oh my goodness, Bob, we're going on tour. This is so exciting. Listen, y'all, tickets are available right this very second. Help us yes, sell this tour out. Help us go bananas. So the next time y'all see us, we'll be at Madison Square Garden, Haney. <laughs> Hello, let me tell you something. This is the biggest tour Bob and I are doing. It's going to be great. Lights, camera, action, dancers, podcast, everything you want in a Bob and Monet show, you're going to get. So make sure you get your tickets at bobandmonet.com. Oh, and this is going to be brand new music. Ooh. All right, bobandmonet.com. The category that I would have been nominated for, which is well, well, let's, let's say this for camera. Tape, I, how do I? Are we? Oh, and then <laughs> uh, the, the category that I would have been nominated for was a uh, uh, unstructured, outstanding, well, can we see? unstructured reality program. And the nominees this year, and the nominees are Below Deck Mediterranean. Ew. Cheer. Cheer. Which one? Love which, on which already top. has one Emmy. Oh, Love on the Spectrum. That's actually a really good. Love show. on the Spectrum, U.S. Uh-huh. RuPaul's, uh huh. Oh, RuPaul's Drag Race Nemesis. Untucked. <laughs> they won. They also won. And, and selling, uh, sunset. selling sunset, which I don't know if they've won or not. But two of these have already won this category. But they had me against Antiques Roadshow, which just what everyone in Middle America is watching. Queer Eye, Shark Tank, like these are like prime times. <laughs> I feel. I feel full. <laughs> but it would have been nice to uh it would have been great. It would have been great. And I was a little bit disappointed and um especially because this would have been my first time actually being nominated if the, if we, if we would have gotten the same nomination we got last time. Did you did you like wake up this morning like <gasps> I woke up this morning and went straight to like I I literally watched uh uh the RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars season 7 episode 9. You watched that and then you then you did yours. No, cuz we said the Jacob said we weren't doing the 9. I asked if we're doing nine. Jacob said, no, we're not doing Watcher. Y'all are both on I y'all. literally said Lou Rose Jagger's All-Star Season 7, Episode 9. That's mine, not your season. Oh, All-Star 7. Every, everything's oh. not about you. <laughs> everything's not about you. Wait, you are, y'all, Monet is... This, these <laughs> I'm on, I'm, yeah, let me guess. I'm on one? Yeah, these Eminem's got Monet on <laughs> one, honey. I saw her fucking yelling at her phone today. Yelling at her team, <laughs> not yelling at my team. J- Jay DeFeo crying right now, <laughs> literally crying. I saw a sad, I saw a sad dog. <laughs> oh God, do not talk about that. You are so extra. Oh, I can't talk about the sad, but uh, <laughs> Colleen's abuse. <laughs> Colleen is not abusing anyone. Is the dog sad? The, okay, I got two questions. <laughs> Just answer them and don't don't uh, expunge on the topics, please. Is it was the dog sad? Yes. Does the dog live with Colleen? <laughs> Answer the questions. Don't expunge. Was the dog sad? Is potato sad? Yes. And does the potato live with Colleen? Yes. I rest my okay, case. Okay, so exhibit A, Your Honor. And these dog potatoes. And I did screen record that video because I knew you were gonna try to act like your little <laughs> you went and deleted your close. I saw you after I mentioned out loud, Monet went and deleted her little close close friend story. I, I did not, it's still up there. And I screen recorded it, so I have evidence. <laughs> and these dog potato is very codependent. Cool like and it's also like some type of oh, chihuahua. Wait, 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 wait. Not, not, not the victim blaming. Go ahead. <laughs> Just cause some type of chihuahua um a cross breed with like a, it's a chihuahua mutt. There's isn't some chihuahua in there. And people know chihuahua shake. So every time Andy leaves, the dog literally <laughs> goes right the front door. Where it feels safe. <laughs> away from Colin. And it's just like shaking and looking sad. And I just be like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? It's the dog is Cinderella. <laughs> You're the wicked stepmother. And Colleen is all of the the, the wicked stepsisters. That's, that's what's going on. <laughs> And I'm just gonna start the hashtag justice for potato because oh, just there needs to be some justice. <laughs> we need some. We need some in home. You're laughing because you know it's true. We need some in home <laughs> investigations investigating on the safety of potato so in silly. the mix of the um, mm-hmm. diabolical calling. <laughs> Please, you are so stupid, ridiculous. Also, I have I found the pictures and I'm gonna post it on Patreon of you canoodling with Colleen and other cats. 
and this, this more than Colleen. Father likes to put on this front for yes. Oh yeah, honey, I have the I have the ocular proof. I will be posting the ocular proof. I hate when you say ocular proof. I hate when you say ocular proof. I'm gonna post on the Patreon. I was like, cause Bobby putting on, and I can't well, wait. Part of me can noodling with cats. Don't don't worry about it. You either it exists or it doesn't. We'll find out um, by two p.m. today. That they were recording because this podcast. We all know that when Monet says she's dropping receipts, uh, bitch. What, what, what Monet is not is Dwayne Reed because there's no receipts. The I'm receipts, dropping them. The receipts are short, they're tiny, they're, and they're non-existent. <laughs> Honey. Pat and I were talking to them and they were like, do you think that CVS, like have they not gotten the memo? Why do the receipts still need to be this long? No one is redeeming anything. Stop wasting trees. Stop it, CVS. No one is, no one has ever taken the CVS receipt back and been like, oh, give me my $2 off. Have you ever done that? No. no. Jacob, have you ever done it? But I do have I've never done it. Oh, Jacob, not on a mic. Don't ask Jacob no question. If, they, if, we can put a little subtitle. If these patrons hear Jacob talking without a mic, they're going to fucking light we'll us up. We'll put a subtitle. I, you know, I honor what Jacob, Jacob doesn't want to be on camera. You you like to bully Jacob. Like, Jacob, Bob, Jacob says, what I say is, if you're going to talk, Bobby will be like, Jacob, get on camera. I don't say get on camera. I say if you're gonna talk, be on a microphone. Which, Maybe, which feels completely appropriate. Mickey Jacob doesn't like his want to hear his voice. Then Jacob shouldn't talk on the podcast. We can put subtitles. They I never so, put subtitles. Well, we can. But we don't even get pictures when we try to put them on there. <laughs> Let alone subtitles. That's because you don't send them. I'll be sending my picture. My picture's being there. Also, also a falsehood. Okay. <laughs> that is what is this shirt you have on? It is from the um uh the Tony Award winning. Pulitzer a strange Prize loop. Winning. Oh, let's talk about a strange loop. Okay, strange so we saw it at different times. I did see it. Um, what was your experience with with a strange loop? So I had an experience. So I went to go see Strange Loop with Peppermint Kennedy, the Peppermint Gummy Bear, the Peppermint Gummy Bear. Wow, Pep Kennedy and Alfredo. So it was <laughs> two black people, a white lady, and a and a white Puerto Rican guy. Um, and. Um, there were some moments where well, I wanted to sit next to Pep, but she ended up coming. <laughs> <laughs> and Pep, she, the Pepper McGuffey Bear was late. I didn't say I didn't say that. I word. couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe I it. I said she was. <laughs> and um, so Pep ended up coming a little, and she sat at the end of the aisle. Um, and I was in. We could have rearranged it, but it doesn't matter. Um, because I really wanted the experience of like seeing the show with like another black queer person. And I was between like these two white people <laughs> watching watching this show. And I was but me and Pep were like reaching down the aisle and like grabbing hands and like laughing and and I was I, was, I cried during the show. Did you sure. really? Yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. I think I cried at the point where most people cry. Which, most, uh, most people with feelings. I don't know if you if you Yeah, know. I didn't experience I don't have those. Yeah. Uh, I cried during the song periodically. Which one is that one? Um it's one it's where uh the, the Jamaican guy, you should relate. With a Jamaican um, actor named John Andrew, um, who sings, I just like to remind you periodically that I love you, son. And he's wearing a um a like a church lady outfit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and, yeah. and it's right before. By the way, we're gonna we need to say spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler I'm gonna alert. give you five seconds to gather your belongings and leave the room. And five seconds has happened. This is right before the AIDS part. Right before the um the uh, AIDS is God's punishment, which is the name of the song. <laughs> which they just started revealing more and more pieces of the set. I was like, this is oh, getting it was wild. wild. It was really wild when, when, when the actor comes out in that robe. Yeah, and then they see the set and the top half of the set and the cross and the big HIV and the casket. Yeah, it was a combination of me like dying laughing and gagging and gagging and sobbing and yeah it really fucks with you emotionally it because is an emotional it, roller coaster it really th that part took me on the the emotional journey that i had with my saying that i'm gay and every and all the stigma people put on me for being a gay man mm -hmm. and like what i know my people in my church thought people in my family what i thought people in my family thought like i was like this feels so real um yeah and and, and it's and it's about a guy named usher who is um who at the time was a uh, a shred, um Lion King? Oh, that's what this who it was. Yeah. Oh, right, that's what he wanted to making all the. I didn't I didn't know they was just doing that for the thing, or if that's really yeah, his that, story. That's why the mom's Sarabi, Sarabi, and and there's like a scar and all mm -hmm. these people. Yeah, and um, so he's told by his family that that if you if you're gay, you'll die of AIDS. Yeah, and then his cousin did die of AIDS. Um, or a complications due to AIDS, I think is the more the proper way to say it. Yeah. The the medically sound way to say it. Yeah. You don't die of AIDS. Um, and um then 
you know, his mother wants him to. I, w- I really want to see Tyler Perry. I w- the day Tyler Perry goes, I want to be in the audience. I, I think Tyler Perry knows about <laughs> No, he knows what Tyler Perry tweeted about it. What did he say? He said something like, it was a congratulations on winning the Pulitzer Prize. And uh-huh. like, I'm going to kick your ass. Ha ha ha, LOL. Oh. Something like that. Nigga. I think Tyler Perry is used to being shit on. This is true. A lot of people have. But this is a takedown piece. Like, it is. I mean, the Tyler, like the way that he goes in on Tyler Perry for what he's done to the black community for hours is, is, is. and I think I I don't think it's a completely fair take on Tyler Perry. I don't think so either. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I don't think it's completely fair, but I think everything that the what what the what the uh, 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 composer artist uh, Michael R. Jackson, Michael R. Jackson, the majority of what he said, I'm like, you're not wrong. I don't disagree with what he's saying. But it is subjective, sure. and I think there are lots of people who feel uplifted and um, seen. But people who are drunk in religion, though. People who cannot see the forest through the trees of religion. You know, when I was, when I used to like Tyler Perry, and I wasn't drunk on religion. I used to just think it was funny stuff, and I thought that I saw a lot of my um, family members on mm-hmm. in those plays. I saw people that I knew, I parodies of people that I knew, exaggerated versions of people that I knew, but isn't that theater? I yeah. mean, isn't this show an exaggerated version of gay guy of like being a black gay guy? You know what I mean? As well. This is me through and through. Work. Um, I saw it with uh, Andrew Thomas Short mm-hmm. and Arcia. So a white ass motherfucker and a black ass lady. That's what my, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so Arcia and I, a lot of it, we would do our little like bitch, like our own Kiki Kakan, and Andy would just kind of like. There were some moments where there were jokes in the show. And white people were laughing. I'm like, what do y'all like? I don't even know about this. Like, what are you even laugh? What are you even laughing at? Like, there's no way you even understand the context. Yeah. Uh, was there a, a particular song that really stuck with you? Because I I started listening to the soundtrack after the um the Broadway and the original cast, like back and forth. The original cast with Larry Owens. I like the AIDS one. The AIDS song. AIDS is God's punishment. AIDS is God's punishment. Um and. Yeah, I, I I really uh 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 Tyler Perry writes real life stuck with me, which is the song that goes, "Who the fuck is you?" No, that is the one too, nigga. nigga you look yeah. it, but you ain't no yes. true, yeah, nigga. nigga. Yeah, that is a um, good one. That I mean, I, I I walked around saying that for days, and uh, it is it, it really is just it's just catchy. I kind of want to make like a like a a mixtape where I like. Who the fuck is da, 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 who the fuck is you? Sample it. Ka, ka, ka. Look at but you ain't no. You ka, da, 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 da. I wanna know how, how Tyler Perry feels knowing that some of like his like friends in the industry were are producers on it and they like made sure they saw the light of day. Well, not just Tyler Perry, but I mean Beyonce is um is is uh he takes stabs at Beyonce. He, he did when he he just didn't like Beyonce. He also takes stabs at what's her name? What's her name? Um Famous black lesbian, Lena Way. No, dead activist, feminist. Um. Uh. 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 Um. Anyway, I remember they, there's a there's a jab at her in the in the play, and I was like, oh, <laughs> and like like her as like a dead person, and I was like, this is, it. but it also is done through this lens of how people talk about us as well. So it's really, it is really, um, I think it's Audre Lord. I don't know what that is. Yeah, there's a, there's a line where he's like, maybe it's not Audre Lord, but it's like, that dead dyke Audre Lord. And I was like, what? Jesus. <laughs> dead dyke. Christ. That alliteration is kind of wild. Um, but it was also not, ri- it's written from the perspective of someone who is homophobic. And there's also a dig at um, Tadrick Hall on the show, too. Yes. Who went to go see it and didn't know about it until he heard his name in the show. Yeah. And was like, oh my. I, I'm trying to imagine what it would be like if I went to a show and and I, I heard be, a dig at me but that I did not know was in the show. Feelings hurt. And I would be like. Feelings hurt. Oh my God. Especially if, like, it's like, if it's like, it feels like a deeply pointed personal one, feelings hurt for sure. I think that, but also the reason why there is a little like grace in in this, in 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 the in the protagonist uh, storyline storyline and his viewpoint is because because he is this black gay man like you feel like the anger that he must have at the world because his experience in life is so tainted by all of this stuff like so 
yes, you see why he's. I, I mean, again, I, I I'm not Todrick Hall. I'm not Tyler Perry. I'm not Beyonce. I'm not there. See, what if you were all those people? <clears throat> Aren't we all the same? Aren't, don't we all come from one place? Let's take. Am a, I not you? And are you not me? We'll take a break and I'll tell you why I'm not you. We're back, but you have a song called "Bitch I'm Beyonce." So are you Beyonce or you're not Beyonce? <laughs> so I don't know when, when the truth is. Is, is, the truth, is the truth just now? You say you're not Beyonce, or is the truth in your chart topping song that you made money off of, perpetuating another thing? You are indeed Beyonce. Oh my God. So can you explain yourself to us, please? <laughs> we deserve answers. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Do we deserve answers or not? I'm very jealous. Of what? You went to Pep show the other day. Pep did not invite me. I did not know her. For, I miss seeing a peppermint show. I'm very, I, I was like very angry. Because if I knew that was happening, I would not have scheduled dinner. I would have went to the show. Well, you had dinner. I would would I would have not have, but I had already scheduled it. If I had known before I went to, I would I, I, I didn't I, know anytime. about it until the day of. Like Pep was like, I have a no, show. No, because you told me the night before. So you lying. No, 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 no. I said Pep's coming over. I, I, I want to reiterate this again for the umpteenth time. What I kept saying was, Peppermint. Ooh, this, ooh, go ahead. I Get, said, give it to me, Daddy. I said Peppermint is coming over. Uh huh. And then you said, and you said, and later Peppermint and I are then you said you said I'm then I'm going to Peppermint show. You told me that the night before. And are you I, sure? Yes. Because well, if, it was, if it was the night before, I'm saying it was within 24 hours. I, did, I didn't know weeks in advance. I found out like the day because me and Pep were planning to hang out so here. So you want to apologize remember, for, for, for saying you said no, something you didn't? No, because you kept being like that's. You remember y'all remember this conversation? That's the evening. <laughs> that's the evening. That's the and evening. And that's where that whole conversation came from, actually. But I think that was the day of. That no, was the day before we recorded, oh, recorded the podcast. That was when they kept, you kept, no, you said, what are you doing? No, because you said, what are you doing today? You are gaslighting oh, me. Oh, you're, you okay, are okay. gaslighting <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please, what's it's you? happening? Y'all see it? Okay, I just I just literally apologize because you were all right. That was you that morning. You did not literally apologize. Now you have the opportunity to. <laughs> I'm giving you the opportunity to literally now, literally, nigga. Who the fuck is you, <laughs> nigga? Apologize, bitch. I would apologize to you. You know, I am, and I don't feel like I need to act dignified to deserve my apology. I, I, see, you're about, you're about to lose it because I was just about to say you can cut me off. So cut me off one more time, you get. Also, oh, so my apology is based on. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Apologize to me. <laughs> You're not gonna tell me what to apologize. I'll apologize before this podcast is over. How about that? Will you? I will. And I'm gonna remind you every five minutes to keep pushing it back for <laughs> the last second. I will tell you this. But anyways, what I'm saying is that day I found out because me and Pep were hanging out, but then Pep told me that she had a show at the Soho House. Jacob was like, "Why is Pep in town?" And I was like, "Yeah, I didn't even think to say, bitch, why are you in town?" Yeah. And then she was like, "I'm doing a show at the Soho House, which I did a show at the Soho House years ago." Um, in New York City, the one over here in LA is nice. Yeah, I went to the one in in WeHo. Did you do it in in the theater? There's like no, there's like a there's like a lounge space. Upstairs. There's a lounge space, and there's also the theater where I wear. Um, the Lady J had a preview of one of her movies coming out, and I went to see there. It was very nice. And I, I, we, we, she was in the in the in the, in the cabaret lounge. Work. Space. and it was so it was it felt like I was back at. I'm Bay. very jealous. I'm very jealous. Also, oh. Soho House costs two thousand six hundred dollars a year. Jacob says so. Could you subscribe? Jacob, Jacob just says that Soul House costs twenty six hundred dollars a year, and um, you remember this in the pandemic, the Soul House. Re- <laughs> you remember this? What? When Sting Rivalry got regular, the Soul House had reached out to us, and they were like, "Hey, um, we would love, we love Sting Rivalry, we love Bob and Monet, we love them to do a podcast specific about the Soul House, and we would give them a membership for um, uh, I was it was either a year or like a couple years, and you and I were like, nigga, get pay us." <laughs> Yeah, so like, short answer is, I, I mean, I certainly wouldn't do it for for a podcast. Um, but I, I don't think that that joining Soul House makes sense to me. I don't like going out that much like that anyway. Yeah, me either. And, and he's also has to pay. I, I get it's an exclusive members only place, but bitch, you still got to pay for your parking. You got to pay for your your drinks. The, the you got to pay for your food. Everything, yeah. And but there, but you don't pay for the entertainment, and you get to be in a place that's pretty much promised to be never crowded, crowded. Right. And you don't have to wait a long time, I guess. And it feels exclusive, I reckon. Yeah. But um, like one of my friends uh is is a member of like the <laughs> what? I reckon. I reckon. <laughs> and I mean I wouldn't know because I've never been a member. But um, one of um um my friends is a member of the like uh Santa Monica Cabanas. Can you Google it? It's a, it's a, it's the something Cabanas. And um, I went there and it's this like this restaurant here in L.A. It's here in L.A. It's, it's right off uh Santa Monica. Uh, I sound like such an L.A. person. It's right off Santa Monica. No, if you take Fountain down toward West oh Hollywood. Oh, my God. You're getting, you're getting more L.A. You're getting more and more take, L.A. If you take Fountain going west away from La Brea. Uh. <laughs> and then uh, it's like uh, a little bit past uh, North Crescent Heights. I'm not anyway, nice enough to go there. It's West Hollywood. It's in West Hollywood. Okay. And it's the something Cabanas. And I went there. And it was like everyone there was just so like fancy. And you can't take your phones in. 
Really? Yeah. It, or it, they take your phone and they put a sticker over the camera. Like you can't take pictures in there or anything. Interesting. And it's like super elite and like. Who'd you go with? Steve Warren, who's uh, one of the creators that we're here. Yeah. He and I had like a little a little date. It was just me and him. It wasn't a. His partner? I think his partner may have been out of town. His partner's from Tennessee. He may have been visiting family. So Steve and I just had a date down there. I hate to say this to you. And also, I felt crunchy as hell. All these oh, girl, because uh, you have the, uh, what do you call it? Ballet. Mm. And I'm waiting, and there's like a Lamborghini and a Hummer <laughs> and a G Wagon and a Porsche. And my little Toyota came around the corner. I said, <laughs> not, not my little Toyota and like between a Porsche and a fucking Tesla. But at least you'll just wrap, so it looks very nice. Yeah, that's the trick. Get yourself a not that expensive car and then just also, give it a custom wrap job. Just change the logo. I mean, I probably, they took the logos off of mine. And just put, you should put B. Oh, your logo, bitch. That would be everything. I could get myself a, a, a custom printed Do logo. Do it. Bitch, it would get people be like, what's a bob? <laughs> people would get him like, and they would just send on their phones, a bob. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but you need to get your shit together here. I, <laughs> so I came here. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I came here to come to work. Okay. I get out the elevator. And when I tell you, a fucking animal was chasing me down your fucking hallway with this that big, bitch, the big, that white, big dog. white dog bob when i tell her name first of all her name is lady ice and bob and the thing is galloping down the hallway like a horse in a field no, la like, lady lady runs these streets and i was like <laughs> and then so she's coming out I was, like, I was like whoa whoa and i turned the other way to walk away and this fucking and, and the lady was like no it's okay i was like this is not okay that's inappropriate no lady is the colleen of this of this estate y'all the they're, dog they're, it's like it's like the size of a great dane. It's it's like a big poodle. It's it's thing. a big white poodle. It it is and it, it it go it go it's tried to come in our house before. Have you seen the Jacob? It will run up. It's, it it is a very friendly dog. She's just very curious. Sometimes she does bark, which I don't. She love. was barking and galloping. Yeah, she barks and runs, but she <gasps> but she's never like tried to like hurt her that I've seen. She don't bite. <laughs> No, she doesn't bite. <laughs> she got teeth. Right. <laughs> like she bites something. And um, but no, uh Lady is I, I think I do think that they should put Lady on the leash yes. all the way to the elevator. <laughs> but Lady doesn't really scare me that that much. And I and I like the people who uh that lady that lady has a relationship with. And um no, but Lady is wild. She is wild. A girl, and just and also because the hair, I guess, is his knees are trim. So like the hair is like blowing in the wind and this shit is this is galloping at me. I mean, well, I mean, we have to get uh, aggressed by a dog. So I, I think that if, if if lady can run up to us, we are allowed to talk about lady. <laughs> that seems fair to me. Oh, I was gagged. I was like, I was, I, I thought someone's dog like broke the leash and about to fucking um, attack me. I was about to sue the pants off of you. Okay, the, the, I would own everything. This would be my podcast studio. All these um, lights and cameras and there's shit. There's also here. something about uh, black people really don't be trusting other folks' dogs. I don't. We were at um, we were <laughs> we were on Runyon Canyon with Pep, and we were coming. First of all, Pep. I don't know if I ever told this on the podcast. So Pep is um is lost on Runyon Canyon. So the night before, Wait, me lo okay. Let me full story. The night before, me and Jacob are um are downtown at like at Pep's Airbnb. We're hanging out. We're playing some some card game. I can't remember the name of the game, but it was really fun, actually. And then I was like, just so you know, tomorrow me and Alaska are doing Runyon together. And she goes, oh, I want to come. And I said, work, girl. She goes, but, you know, I don't I don't, I don't have great knees, so coming down might be a problem. But I will walk up the, I will walk up Runyon came with you and then take an Uber home. And I said, okay, work. That makes sense. You can get an Uber at the top of Runyon? Yes, you can. There's yeah. an entrance on both sides. There's a parking lot at the top, at the top of Runyon. Actually. I don't know. If you want to park, you got to go to the top. And, and come down. I haven't knew that. So she says, "Okay." So then we we um we were headed there, and um, peppermint was. So <laughs> she so Pep ended up um saying, "Okay, you are already there. Don't worry, I'll meet you at the top and walk down with you." Then so Pep takes an Uber to so me and Alaska and Jacob are walking up Runyon, but when you run, you don't have great service. Right. So Pep so Pep ends up like texting at some point. I was like, and I remember saying to Jacob. Pep's gonna get here and be lost. Oh. I know she's gonna be I lost. I'm like, bitch, where are y'all? So Pep is texting us like, where are you? And we're like, we're so we're trying to give a descriptions, but everything looks it's like a, a piece of road and a piece of dirt. It's like everything is the same thing. So we're trying to find Pep. Pep is sending pictures of things. <laughs> 
to like show where she is, but not like a far back picture with a lot of context, like a close up picture of a rock on the ground. I can show you the pictures that Pepsi me. I will try to give you on the screen. A clo- she's like, I'm near this, and it's like a zoomed in picture of a rock on the ground. I'm like, Pep, that is not giving me anything. So then she's like, I'm by I'm by a cell phone tower. I'm like, okay, it's a tower. So so we're looking. We know where the tower is. So Jacob is like running. To, was your mom with us too? No. So Jacob's running to try to get Pep. Me and Alaska are, are off the trail. We're running behind Jacob. Jacob goes off the little secret paths on running all the time. And then I gets, bet he does. It gets to the point where me and Pep are like screaming on Runyon Canyon. You hear Pep going like Bob, <laughs> and I'm like Pep, avalanche. <laughs> so we're screaming to each other, and then I see Pep at the top of it. Pep is at the, t- I mean, as high as you can get on running. Pep is at the summit. <laughs> Runyon Canyon. So then we all, me, Alaska, and Jacob are like climbing up this thing that is not, I don't think it's a path. It is like a, is very steep. We're like rock climbing at this point <laughs> to get to Pep. And then as we come down the hill uh, to where it meets the the, the paved road, uh-huh. um, this dog just runs up to no. us. You remember this, Jacob? This dog just, I mean, just gallops. And all the white people are like, hey! <laughs> is it there? That's Someone not else's. Oh, God. So, you know, Jacob in Alaska are, beep, 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 what's your name? Um, <laughs> and and, and like. I'm like, keeping my distance. Pep is paralyzed with fear. <laughs> I mean, paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> Strike a pose, <laughs> and, she, and and we're trying to get the dog away. It was it was a, it was a that was all to say that to say that that is a, I think that's a common. I saw this thing on TikTok recently that was kind of like I don't know how I feel about this. What? Whenever like black people talk about anything on TikTok, one like black person joins like stitches the video and it goes, "Well, you know why this is? It's because of slavery." And everything goes back to this, which part of me is like, I don't need to know all this. Like one was like, uh, one was like uh, English, like American English. And the phrase is, that's very funny. And then it said A-A-V-E. And then it's just someone just running away while laughing. And then it stitched someone being like, well, you know why that is? It's because. I, I, I know what you mean. It was like, you know, things like the peanut gallery and other things like that. Yeah, the only reason we run while we laugh is because it is a, is right, a right, generational right, right, right. trauma response to but what I'm like. I just want to run and laugh. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just want to run and laugh. Can I, I just run that. and laugh without feeling like a slave for running and laughing. And there's also this conversation going on right now on TikTok where it's about how to carve fruit. So there's this one thing about this. This guy carves a coconut in a way where only the membrane is there. It's like he carves Is it a hard one or or a green one? It's one of the green ones. Okay, yeah. But he does it in this way, and all these Caribbeans are sick to me like, I've never seen that. I've never seen that. Normally, you you take the cutlass and you chop it, chop it, chop it, and you have it in half. I've never seen you. No one carves a coconut. No, the way he does it, everyone who's doing it is like, this is, all these Caribbean folks are like, this is brilliant. I will only be doing this from now on. I've never, I, why, they're, they're all being like, why have I never seen this? Why have I, ne- in all my years, why am I just now seeing this? And we have, we have, we have a few coconut trees. You see how some coconut trees are right? on your, on your um, estate? On the house. Estate. No. Say estate. <laughs> um, we know that. We know the And, um, and, and th- is this the one? Yeah, he's, he, he carves the coconut. Okay, yeah. and it's just like the it, interesting. So he's it's, it's, it's the same, it's like every Caribbean person has the same. That's wow. That's like it's just like the jelly. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what? So everyone's like, anyway. So there's a discourse now on TikTok about how to cut watermelons. Uh, and you know who's not participating? White people. Any black people. No black people are participating in the conversation that I've seen on TikTok about how to cut watermelon because I think publicly liking watermelon is like is like a faux pas. Fried chicken and watermelon. There was this woman on TikTok who was which like, I take to this place downtown called Fixins. You'll love it. There was this woman. Was, was there the watermelon? There? It was soul food, uh, but it's like really good soul food. There was this. There was this woman the on TikTok everything. who used to like obsess over watermelon. She was like. She watermelon helped her, and I'm not saying she's right or wrong. I just want to say that out loud right now because I, I didn't dive deep enough into her content to decide whether or not she's right or wrong. Mm-hmm. But she said that she was sick and unhealthy, and then she ate a lot of watermelon. And she got healthy, and she and she got healthy. 
and and that was that was part of her journey of regaining her health and and eating healthier foods and she would make these absurd videos eating watermelon and i mean like tr- almost triggering videos <laughs> of this black woman eating watermelon in the her name was Johnny Watermelon in the can you find a Johnny Watermelon video, Jacob? Her name is Johnny Watermelon. Why don't you, you put this in Jacob search history? <laughs> and this she would is, and, and uh, she would eat trick. watermelons in these like in these really egregious uh like um, intentionally. So, so I don't know her intentions, but it looked it looked it looked like a buckwheat type character right. eating With, watermelon. Like little like close on her hair and like No, she just kinda wasn't wearing a wig. And she was usually in sportswear. She was using like a sports bra or like some okay. bike shorts. And she just wasn't wearing a wig. So her, she had her natural hair out. Got it. And uh, sometimes she would wear a wig, but then she would like get the wig, like knocked off of her head um, and while this, eating. And this, and this like made her famous? Yeah, but it also made her like public enemy number one. To black people. Black people. Got it. And part of me is kind of like. Um, oh, I see this. Oh, God. She just eats watermelon in really God, ridiculous egregious, ways. Yeah. Yeah. And part of me is like. I feel like this is part of the, the trauma response. Oh, now nah, I'm one of those people. Oh, <laughs> You're fully become. But like, why can't this lady? Like, why can't why can't black people just like watermelon and eat it in public? And, and I, mean, I think it? you can't deny what the stigma. Like, I what mean, if you just like watermelon? I mean, you can't. Like, yeah, and that's the thing. But you doing that thing, you also have to acknowledge like the stigma behind it and what had and how black people haven't made to feel about liking Welch's grape soda, fried chicken, and watermelon. Like that. That is also a real thing. And and you can't. Do you ever do feel it. embarrassed about liking fried chicken? I, I have I've never felt that embarrassed about fried chicken. Do you know what I just found out the other day? Do you know that black people taught Koreans how to make fried chicken? I didn't know that. Well, they was, they fucking turned it up because Korean fried chicken is banging. After the Korean bustin', bustin'. after the Korean War, you know, a lot of black soldiers were there, and 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 because traditionally before Koreans would boil the chicken or they would uh, or or do it other ways. And then is this a fact? This is a fact. This what? was on this was on this was on. Uh, on I watched a whole food network thing about, it, and then I did Google oh. research myself. And um, yeah, did, after, like like an anti vaxxer Monday did her own research. <laughs> after the Korean War, black folk were there in, in in Korea, and they taught Koreans how to fry chicken, and binge, and they took it oh it's, on the, another echelon, it's, another type of chicken, another test. I don't know what they do, but they they have a really great not they Koreans. Like, I don't know what they do. You, the little figure. Oh my god. There used to be that great um, cocoa wings. Yeah. Oh my god, y'all! Yeah. If you live in New York City, one hundred six between Amsterdam and Broadway, cocoa wings. But you got to go to the KFC across the street and get some ranch. They don't have ranch. <laughs> they don't have ranch. But the yeah. KFC's not even there anymore. It's I closed. Love, I love my Korean fried chicken with so You got to go around the corner. Radishes. There's also a McDonald's on 103 in Amsterdam. Take that McDonald's up to 106 between Amsterdam and Broadway. Go to Coco Chicken. Get the uh, garlic and Parmesan or the spicy. Oh, my God. It's so good. Oh, girl. Okay, let me tell you something. Masterclass, Bob. Masterclass is a game changer. Have you watched the RuPaul Masterclass, Bob? I have not watched it yet. Tell me about it, please. Oh, RuPaul is giving you the secrets to her success, girl. But RuPaul, is, she talks from the real rip. She has Raven on there, and she is, she's including the people who use RuPaul. Um, um, well, not how she got there, because she got there all on her own, honey. But the people who help her maintain her RuPaulisms and her RuPaulness, and it's fierce. You learn so much about, about mother. Do you call it mother like You want to make more money? You want to make more money? Wear a suit. You want to make more money? <laughs> Wear a suit. Well, listen, I'm a very, very busy woman, and I'm always working on different projects. One of my favorite things to do is to make music. And y'all have heard my newest song, Love Like This. Ow. Um, and I'm just getting started. That's just a little taste. I'm always interested in to know how artists compose, produce their own songs, and I've gotten really into masterclass for learning about how different artists make their music. Alicia Keys has a class. Do you like Alicia? I know she. Love you you did one gig with her, and you swear she's your friend. Oh my god, I just drilled. Yeah, oh, oh, loop it. Loop it. <laughs> Alicia Keys cast was fierce and I absolutely loved it, darling. It was super fun and informative, and I was blown away by the depth of knowledge and the quality of the experience. I highly recommend that all y'all check it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And as a sibling rivalry listener, you get 15% off on an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash rivalry. That's masterclass.com slash rivalry for 15% off masterclass.
Um, yeah, I never felt any way about eating fried chicken, about, about liking grapes. How do you feel about that woman liking, like doing, doing this whole watermelon bit? Um, I think that she's doing, I think she's doing a bit to, to stir a conversation. I, I, you know, but again, who doesn't? This is what people do on, on the social media channels. Am I upset by that? No, but I, if someone felt insecure about eating watermelon and had that in their brain about liking fried chicken or watermelon, I can see how that could be triggering for black folk, but I'm not triggered by it. Do you it. like fried chicken and watermelon? I don't like watermelon. I hate watermelon. It has watermelon. It's one of those fruits. It has no fucking taste. You might as well drink a cup of water. I hate watermelon. I love fried chicken though. If I ever see you eating a cantaloupe, I don't. Or I don't honeydew, like. Do I don't you're like? Done. I don't like cantaloupe. Watermelon. No one honeydew. likes. No one likes cantaloupe or honeydew. But it's always in the fruit salad. Right. And you can get out of my fruit salad. <laughs> no one wants you. Do you like watermelon? Yeah, I like watermelon. Do you like fried chicken? I love fried chicken. Have you ever feel worried about eating it? Yes, I have. Yeah. Where? Um, just like. We were at Pep Show last night, and there were these. <laughs> this someone ordered some fried chicken. It was like chicken nuggets, like these big chicken nuggets. Yeah. And Pep like grab. Pep did a bit where she was like grabbed one off someone's plate and like ate it, and then she was like commenting on the fried chicken. And then you could see this moment where she was like, "I am not about to talk about fried chicken in front of this room full of white people." I feel like you and I would double down on that. But but it's out of defiance though, and and I'm doubling down because I feel weird. So I'm doubling down because I'm acknowledging that there's something weird. And right. I'm just le- and I'm just leaning in. Yeah. You know what I mean? As opposed to literally not having any feelings about it. Yeah. I like get- if you come to my house, Jacob's come to my house and we have every time Jake every time Jacob's come to my house, we've had fried chicken. At your house. What do you to mean? my mom's house. Oh, got it. Like either my uncle Steve cooks it or we order it from somewhere. Pretty much every time. That and wings. We always have wings too. We Jacob. love wings, my family. Jacob. I don't know that wings are necessarily like a black thing, but we love wings. We like wings too. We like wings too. What kind of wings? We love buff. We like buffalo and lemon pepper. Oh no, not wings. We do like uh, like honey barbecue wings and stuff like that. Oh, that makes not sense. like fried. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I mean, yeah. I mean, and but we, we talked about this before. Like, do you like rape soda? Not particularly. I like orange I think soda. It's an, I think it's a, a, it's, a, it's, a it's a black a, American black American thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, are you African American? I'm West Indian American. I don't know how much because my family is West Indian, but I was born in America, so because of African West Indian. Yeah, I'm like African American West Indian. And I think you're African West Indian because black people aren't indigenous to the West Indies. African West Indian. So I think African is origin, and the second thing is where you're from. So African origin, American, but uh, from everybody from Africa. I think I'm West Indian American. Yeah, yeah, okay, not in the way that Shakira says we're all Africa. I mean, in the way that nigga, you and me, African and Jacob, not <laughs> like in that way. <laughs> we so, are, but in, in West Indies, are you African West Indian? No, they don't say that. They just say the, the West Indians do not have that. So, what are the white people from the West Indies? They're West Indian, and then the, y'all don't distinguish. No, I was saying when I grow, like, so you're not African. So, yeah, you're West Indian American. I am. I think it is an African American, specifically grape soda, specifically like descendant of American chattel slavery, specifically southerner thing yeah because i don't know that new york black folks like known for eating fried chicken either but like in the south we we do yeah yeah but we talk about like uh, we did one about stereotypes we were, we were we did. it yeah. was a long time ago it though. was a long time it's ago it's okay to revisit the conversation because maybe we have changed our uh our plates on some of these things too yeah I, i'm you're right i'm offended when i see you eat fried chicken you i don't, see me eat fried I don't chicken? like seeing you eat fried chicken well i mean how often do you see me eat fried chicken pretty often once a week that is not true I don't kids. even think you see me eat once a week. <laughs> Bitch, on this podcast I have. You, okay, you're the eating. I literally one time leaned off camera to take one bite <laughs> of something and Monet acts like I'm the bitch who eats. I think Jacob, normally, more than anything, Jacob probably sees me eat um, tacos a lot, specifically Taco Bell. I eat a lot of Taco Bell. We're, I've breathed, like in like the past two years, I've been on my, ta- I've been in my Taco Bell bag. Can I say the thing about Taco Bell is if you get the, if you get the Dorito Locos, the, like the three Doritos Locos and a, and a zero Baja Blast, Mountain Dew zero Baja Blast, it's only 500 calories. Let me tell you something, zero, you know how I feel about zero. Oh, it's the, it's the new life. It has changed the game. And now you, I don't, like I had a, me and Ezra went out last night to this, oh my God, I didn't tell you. <laughs> I, I went to this, Last night, me and Ezra were like, we need to go somewhere because we haven't gone anywhere in a while. Mm-hmm. And like we, we we don't go out anymore. I mean, honestly, we were like, we haven't gone out in a while. <laughs> so we went we went to this uh, comedy show called uh, Accidental Chaos. Uh-huh. It was, I mean, the name should have told me what I was getting myself into. It was absolute madness. Why? The chaos, I don't think it was accidental. <laughs> I think it was intentionally done. It was a room that seats a, 
comfortably about 10 people. Oh, wow. And it's in an alley. Like outside? No, you you have to go down this alley. It's like a side door. You go okay. down an alley. The entrance is like, whoosh. no, that's, I'm being, oh. but, but it look, but it kind of like gives that vibe. Uh-huh. It actually does give that vibe. And, and it's just like this very strange room. It's in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I kind of want to do something here a little bit. Cause this room is wild. Like you walk in and I was like, um, do you, think, like, do you think you'd sell it out? Say again? Do you think you'd sell it out? I don't know, to be honest. After after uh, not giving the Emmy nom, I've, I've lost a lot of confidence. <laughs> um, you know, you walk in and they're like, hey, if it's your first time, you get a free drink. And we were like, well, we don't drink. And he was like, okay. I was like, well, can I, can I just get one of those monsters? And he was like, oh. And I was like, well, I just want a monster. And he's like, ah, you know, you want to, you want to, I can give you a Coke. You want a Coke? And I was like, no, I, w- I want the monster. <laughs> And he goes, we don't have monsters. And I said, I can see them. I'm looking at them right there. There's <laughs> a monster so right there. And he goes, like, oh, no, those are the owner's monsters. And he, I was like, well, he keeps them in the fridge, and I can't get one. I'll buy one. He goes, I cannot sell you. And then I take a step back, and there's, like, a sign on the thing. And it's, like, a monster energy drink sign. It's, like, they're advertising, like, monsters. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I, I had a, co- uh, a regular Coke last night, and it tastes so different. And I'm like, I don't even think I like these anymore. Right? It, yeah. Zero sh- bitch, the zero sugar squirt. And zero sugar ginger ale. The zero, I, the zero sugar sprite. I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest. Zero, uh, I will say diet Dr Pepper slaps. I don't like Dr Pepper. Diet Sun Kiss slaps. You mean Sun Kiss? Uh, no, uh, a uh, Fanta. No, uh, what's the orange one? The, not Sun Kiss. The other version. Fanta. No, not maybe it is Sun Kiss. Zero sugar Sun Kiss is everything. I haven't had zero sugar, but I have had uh, diet Sun Kiss, and it's absolutely and it's zero calories. It's really great. Well, it's not actually zero calories because I also drink zero calorie Gatorade. And here's the thing: zero, it's great. Zero calorie Gatorade. I used when I was um, recently on We're Here. I was like walking around, like doing. A, I mean, I was doing like twenty thousand, twenty five thousand steps a day. I don't know. I was really on my walking shit. I was wild with this. I was I was about this walking life. I was about this cardio, honey. Anyway, um, how many miles is twenty five thousand steps? It's about. I don't know, Jake. You Google that. Um, I think it's maybe like five miles, maybe. So I would go, I would um, drink the zero calorie, zero sugar Gatorade, twelve miles. Wow. Um, I would Google. I would not Google. I would. But so one serving was zero calories, but three servings was ten calories. So mm. Mama, what's good? How many servings in the bottle? Three. So one serving is not zero calories. Where's the tea, honey? Like, that's, <laughs> someone's lying to me. Well, one can of zero sugar ginger ale is zero calories. Which is, is it, though? Yes. Because three cans might be 10. Three cans is five calories. Then there's calories in one of those cans. Unless three cans is one calorie. So I mean, less than zero is what it's saying. So maybe like, it can't be less than zero. If three cans is five calories, that's more than one can, one calorie per can. Oh, bitch, I don't know Unless math. all the calories are in one can. They can't lie. Unless all five of the calories are, are in the last sip <laughs> of the third can. That means there's more than one calorie per... Yeah, but there's approximately 1.2 calories in one. But that's not zero. It's, it's virtually zero. I want to know how many fucking calories are in this fucking can of <laughs> drink. Uh, in, a, in a can of Coke Zero. It says zero, but I know it's not zero. So when I saw this this um, Gatorade discrepancy, I was like, I'm I'm I want to know what's what's good. <laughs> like Miley, what's good? I feel like I've been bamboozing a lot too. I mean, I kept drinking it. Your um your journey with Pat reminded me of this thing. So back when and this is back in January, Andy and I what four months for the Runyon uh, Canyon journey. Yeah, for like four and five minutes, whatever. He's like, "Oh, I'm doing a work trip to Vegas. You want to come?" I was like, "Sure, I'll come." I had like oh, two this days when time. you was uh did the little braids and you and you did the long foot picture. When, what you put, love when, you, when you put your foot toward the camera, so your, yeah. your foot looked like huge, but you were leaning back, and you had the the last one was your little blurry. This one, Monet was in her blurry picture phase. Monet went through My a phase, lawyer. blurry picture phase. <laughs> Monet went through a phase where God. she would post a bunch of pictures, and then the last picture would be blurry, and she would act like she didn't intend for the last picture to be blurry. And I went to the pit stop and I saw her try to intentionally get a blurry picture. <laughs> yes, you did. I I was at the pit stop. I have oh ocular God. proof. I saw Monet and Patty taking pictures, and in the last one, Monet was trying to move and get a blurry picture. Yes, you were. 
Stop fronting. It wasn't accidentally put. It wasn't kooky. It wasn't. <laughs> it, 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 it was. It was. It was calculated. <laughs> anyway, so I get to Vegas, and it, it was a workshop for him. I had two days off, and I. I so, but I had to do that one thing. I got in drag for, and it, which I got you together in my live stream about you. When I was in the blue thing at that super thing, and everyone was like, Monet, why are you being so banjo? I was like, because Bob brings me there. Anyway. Oh, my God. So I was doing that thing, and doing that thing, and then he, you know, Andy does a lot of active stuff where they go, like, rock climbing and shit like that. So on, like, the second day, that he does that whole day. He comes back to the hotel that night. He's like, what you doing tomorrow? I was like, I just have like, this one thing to do in the morning, but then I'm, like, I'm free. And he's like, okay, do you want to come on a hike? I was like, you know, I don't really like hikes. You know, that's not my thing. I don't like camping. I was like, it's, it's, it's like, babe, he's like, it's just a little like one to my hike. It's really fun. It's really simple. Like you should come and do it. Last words. And I was like, well, I didn't bring any like hiking shoes. All I have are my Doc Martens and Toms. And he's like, just with the Toms, like it would be fine. Like not the, the Doc Martens were the smart choice, girl. Not the Toms. Oh, watch me work. <laughs> so we get to the trail, Bob. It is in the de- it is in the desert in Las Vegas, right? We start traversing. We start walk- doing this hike. The hike ended up being about 7.5 miles, walking through the pebbles and sand. At halfway through the hike, we start to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not over exaggerating. We start traversing up Bob, like a clay thing. Like when you are like trying, what you need like little spigots to like mm-hmm. get off the thing, right? And I'm in this moment, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to fucking kill this guy. I've been my boozle. Girl. So then we hike in this thing and he's looking back at me like, cause he knows I'm like pissed off, right? And then we and then we start hiking. We go to this water thing. Then we have to- Money's in full drag, so. <laughs> Blue wig. <laughs> it might have my Tom zone. Then we have to climb up this metal ladder about like maybe about uh, 20 feet up. Climb up this ladder, go into this hot spring. We are in waist deep water. We are in That's wa- not true. I swear to God. I swear on my life. We're in waist deep water and I'm sitting there like like wading in the water. (laughs) Wait in the water. And then every time you and then every time you go into because to you you have to go through this hot spring to get out the other side. So every time you go in a different part, the water's getting higher and higher. So it started out at knees, went to like my hip, then went to What are you thinking when you when you when you submerge your entire feet in the water? How far had you gone? Like, how many minutes do you think by the time you reached the water? By the water, this was, we were probably about two and a half hours into the hike. Oh, because if it would have been anything less than 20 minutes, I'm turning around. <laughs> no, it's, I, 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 I couldn't go back. Because you're closer to the end. You're closer now. to the end. Oh, that's so annoying. Bob, when I tell you, Bitch, I call look. Call me an Uber chopper. <laughs> Uber chopper. <laughs> Uber blade, come and pick blade. me up, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, so I am way deep in water, and, and, and Andy's just like, and then we get on the other fucking side. It's another like two mile hike to the van. But when I tell you, I was so heated. He was like, I thought you were going to break up with me. I was like, bitch, I wanted to. Heated. You were wet and, and, and cool. That I is, was, that's wild. This is typical Andy. He just, just does crazy shit like this. And I was so Did mad. Did he know there was going to be water in there? He knew there was going to be a little water. He was like, he was like, he's like, he's like, you know, I mean, your, your feet might get like a little wet. But like, it'll be okay. So bitch, in his adventure, he did get a little wet. A little. I, I was mean, submerged in th- water. I mean, it went past a little, but there was a point where if you got a little wet. I was so it's, it's, mad. It's like when someone gives you dollars, like technically you have one cent. And, and it is me and all these white folk, and you know, this sober people. So they're all trading stories about like sober and stuff, which is beautiful. And then, and then, and then. You'll love them. <laughs> they're sober. And Andy's and like, do you want to take off your clothes and get in the hot spring? And I look at this nigga, I'm like, no, I don't like want to naked, get naked. Like naked naked? No, like to, just to get down to like your underwear or something. I was like, no, I don't want to take off my clothes and get in the hot spring. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get in the hot spring? Of course he did. And your black ass just sitting at the side while a bunch so of white folks sit in the hot spring. Your black ass is on the corner looking <laughs> wet, ball headed, confused, and, and wet. And bad as hell. What is it? I'm wet. I'm playing. I'm wet. I'm scared. I'm just. Play- what is it? I'm wet. I'm cold. And I'm just playing scared or some shit. From all my- of these four white folks just in the water, like I'm sitting there, like <laughs> on the side, just angry, girl. That is wild, yeah, girl. I, I am not a, a naturey type. Me I don't either. love that shit. And, and people get so mad when you're not. They're like, bitch, just try. Like, bitch, I don't want to try. I'm not interested. It also, try. It's not like I've never been in nature. <laughs> like, I didn't just land on planet Earth today, bitch. I'm 36 years old. I've been in nature before. I don't. No. I used to live in the woods. I am. I used to live in Phoenix City, Alabama, in the woods, honey. I'm good on nature. No desire to be in nature. Would you ever go camping? I don't want to. Me either. But I mean, I, 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 under certain circumstances, I, pro- I mean, last time I went camping was probably 15, 14 years ago when I first got sober. I went, I, I, I got sober on a camping trip. Oh, really? Yeah. So you were like detoxing on this on this thing? I mean, it wasn't deep. I didn't have like delirium tremors or anything. <laughs> Booze. <laughs> yeah, but um, 
but um but i did quit drinking on a um on a camping trip and that was my last time i ever went camping and i do not think i'll be returning to the great wild i was in the big basin state park in california ezra likes camping right ezra likes nature yeah he likes nature i don't know if he's like into camping oh, okay. I, mean, I think he probably would be into camping um like when, when we went to mexico he was like trying to get me to go to this like this <laughs> just like, this this wasn't just like <laughs> it was like this like cr- like a, like a cr- creek but like not a creek but like this like this place where everyone just like jumps in the water and i went and i was like it's like bugs in the water <laughs> right I'm like, like i'm like no i hate that i'm like i don't want to i don't want to jump in there like this is not <laughs> and, if, and, if, and this is the thing people are like just try it i'm like but i don't want to get in the fucking water the worst is when you're the person who's like they <laughs> they beat you down so bad that you've agreed to roll your pants up and stick your feet in the edge of the pool and you just like, geez, I'll put my feet in. Why do y'all want us in the water so bad? Like y'all who love water, why do y'all want people to get join you in the water so bad? I don't think I'll ever understand that. They need you in that water, girl. Like they need their last breath. <laughs> they, they want you get. Just come on, get in, get in, get in. Mm. Okay, maybe you and I. Okay, so we want a bathing suit. Let's, let's get her a bathing suit. Oh Everyone. my god, people offer your bathing suit. If this uh, is Todrick. There's a size one. <laughs> my offering you a bathing suit. Filling out of their bathing suit, looking crazy. I'm like, this is what they bring you. They, they bring you. Naomi Smalls wears this bathing suit. You can see it in, with Monet. <laughs> it is a black bathing suit, and the the side there's no fabric. It's just hardware connecting to more hardware. Am I describing it well? It's like yeah. imagine a speedo, it's a, very, black a black speedo, speedo. But then on the side where there would be fabric, there isn't any fabric. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a, a metal. It's, it's like a, a carabiner. Yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very nice, expensive bathing suit. It is very skanky. Yeah. But those would be the kind of motherfuckers being like, I have a suit for you. <laughs> no, you don't. Not for me, bitch. You have a suit for you. For you. <laughs> oh, my God. Maybe Stephen Rivers should go on a camping trip. Last time I was at your house, I fucking chipped my tooth. <laughs> for the f- trying to get into the pool. You were going to go in the water? I was headed to the pool and I chipped my tooth. Damn. So you're, you're done. And he invited me over to reason I'm coming to the pool. I said, hell to hell to the no, <laughs> no, 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 no. To the no, no, no. I like hell that you're going to look very 90s with your little look today. This is Urban Outfitters. <laughs> is it? The hat too? No, the hat is from um, the store that I like to shop at downtown in, uh, in DTLA. Um, DTLA. Just say downtown. Just say downtown. Well, what do they think I'm talking about downtown New York? I travel a lot. You live I like in... to shop down. I actually don't shop down. I like to shop in Midtown. Yeah. In New York. In New York City. So, but when I say Midtown, I say Midtown New York or Midtown Manhattan or Mima. This is not calling Mima. Mima. When don't you dare Mima. call Mima. Mima. When people call it um, Noha, I'm like, the Noha, Noha is not a thing. Noha Mima. Or Noho. Noha Mima. It's only Soho. There's no, no we, fucking Noho. We, we ha. What's Harlem? We ha. Oh, we ha. No ha. No. So ha. <laughs> Why he? What's that? Washington Heights. Hey. That was the Wahi Diner. Why? How is, how is Nicholas Smith doing? I haven't heard from him in a couple years. Is he dead? I talk to Nick almost every day. And uh, we had a real good kiki yesterday. About what? You want to share with the class? We were just talking about um, what we've been up to work and gossiping about our friends. Want to share with the class? No. Nope. I do not care. To, I will. I will not. I will not. What? What does uh, Yolanda Salazar say? Who? Yolanda Salazar has an interview where she goes, "I will not comment on that. <laughs> I will not be answering that question." And like, there's some interview where they're interviewing Yolanda Salazar, and she keeps going, "I will not be answering that question." Should we do like a? Should we do like a stunt about not getting nominated for the Emmys? She and I get butt naked and walk down and get in the pool. Oh, uh, oh wait, sorry, in the hot spring. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do a stunt? No, I think that I would like to accept my lack of nomination with grace and dignity, <laughs> and uh, and and move on. I'm, I'm I am a little bit sad about it. Hey, I would love to be nominated. I think for me, it's it's really sad because the show that I that I'm on was nominated in this category before, and I was not. Um, I wasn't nominated, and I was, this is my chance to be like an Emmy nominated. Um, person but also i think it avoids a uh heartbreak down the line because clearly if you weren't nominated you're definitely not gonna win <laughs> if 
you can't get enough votes to be nominated, you definitely can't get enough votes to win. Quinta Brunson, she like broke records today. She's the first person. Three Emmys in one. In, for, for black, first black woman. First black woman. Yeah, to get three Emmys in one. Three nominations in one thingy. And uh, Nicole Byer got a lot of nominations too, though. Nicole, Nicole Byer got nailed it. And she hosts, I think she got two nominations. Oh, okay. For best host, and she got nominated for Nailed It. I love Nicole Byer. Nicole Byer, <clears throat> no matter how huge her star is, she's always so chill and so cool and so down to earth every time. She's one of those people that you will see, that you would just see everywhere. Yeah. A, a, a poster, a billboard, a, a, an ad, a, a, a something of Nicole Byer is always, always yeah. popping up. Nicole Byer um, is also very good at decorating. Do you know this? No. She's really good at decorating. And my, my friend, you haven't met my friend Darren Bluestone. Darren is also one of those folks who just like, who's just naturally, I mean. How do you know that she's good at decorating? Did you see her place? Well, I've seen pictures of her place. She showed me pictures when we, when we had brunch, me and her and Sashir. And um, and then she came over here and she was like, hey, what about this and this? And I was like, oh my God, these are all brilliant ideas. I could never execute them all because they're just, she was saying them so fast. I, I was forgetting them as she was saying them. And some of them just seem like massive undertakings where I would I would like have like a bathroom with like a weird light fixture and I would just leave that light fixture until I would I would just never change it. I would just be like, I would never think I don't really care for this light fixture. I should change it. Yeah. And she was like, Oh yeah, if you just switch this and get this, and you can do it yourself, but you can also have someone in it. And a task grab will do that for like thirty five dollars. And then you can then of course if you this it's easier than you think. And then of course, you know, contact well, you gotta use contact paper. But if, if you use wallpaper here, you wanna use wallpaper here because this actually this this color is really good and you don't want to mess it up. But you have to get the wallpaper that doesn't mess up your paper. I'm like, this is too much. I love I love Nicole Byer. Nicholas Byer. Nicola Byer. Nicola. Nicola, nigga. Nicola, nigga. Kaka. Um, I um, yes. I feel like we, we this is our this is our first time. Not we haven't had a a, to, a topic in our podcast in a minute. Mm -hmm. And I like it. I like See? this free form. This is this reminds me of vintage sibling rivalry. And we I still think topics back in the day, didn't we? Not, at the beginning, oh, I don't, yeah, we. Did. You know, do you remember? The, do you know the name of our very first podcast? Do you know the name of it? The one about a podcast. It's called I Don't Like Hugs. Is it? I've been about to fight for four years. Well, yeah, it's really interesting to me that you brag about not liking to give hugs. No, no, I advertise it. So, and I want the word to get out because people like to give hugs without permission. I so I just really like to promote it so that everyone knows I don't like hugs. I say it a lot because I don't want to give hugs to people. I will say. In denying a hug in the moment, it can be very awkward. I will say, though with the monkey box and everything, I am, I do. Because COVID, you know, a lot of people vaccinated, COVID is like where it's at now, and people feel so much more comfortable with hugging and gaga. So people when they see out in public, they, they, run, they run to you with a hug, and I'm, I'm literally like, no. So I, there is something to advertising it and letting people know that that's not what you like. I will, I will concede that that is a very smart. You want to give my apology now that you promised you'd give me? How much time? Do, how much time do they have to give me an apology? As much time as you would like. That what well, that, well, that means that means we are out of time and you we are. Yeah, we've been recording for fifty six minutes. You have four minutes to give. Me, you have four minutes to give me an apology that you that you said you'd give. Okay, I have four minutes, bitch. Why is that? Why is that apology so important to you? Because I want it. Was that? Is it, why, why? I want to rewind to yesterday. So Bob and I, we did a, a little press junket for our upcoming tour, and the Bob that I experienced in that press junket is not who is sitting here today. The person yesterday was sweet, kind. I was putting on graceful. I was funny. Respectful. I was making it. And this person, it was, it was, it was for the press. It was for the, it was for the, for the coverage. This is exactly who I'm. This is the Bob from season, uh, from episode three, season eight of RuPaul Drag Race. That's the Bob I'm looking at now. The Bob that bullied Derek Barrick, pretty much Barrick. I'm the Colleen of this podcast, and you're the potato. <laughs> Art. You better sit there shivering, shake, shaking, and sad. Oh, yeah, sh sh shaking and sad. Our CV over here. Our CV can never remember, um, remember potatoes. And she's like, uh, biscuit. She pickle, like biscuit, mayonnaise, hot dog. Like, mayonnaise, come here, mayonnaise. They're seeing town. She comes a lot. She's um dating someone who lives in LA. How come I ain't seen her see Who? They're a patron. I feel like this is giving too much of their information. I, I didn't say we have over. <laughs> We have like over fifteen thousand last for their social. <laughs> but the funny thing was that so RC and this person. So when RC was here back in January, they met. Um, they met up on Hinge, 
they want to well they dm'd on hinge and rc was saying by, by me so then later that day rc is like um um i met this this girl and i want her to is it she's dating a woman yeah and she's is like she a gay yeah is this a plot twist <laughs> what do you mean this, this is a plot twist, Arcea right? Arcea has started dating a woman. But this is a plot twist. This has not like been the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was like, wait, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, baby, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa baby, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so then, and she's like, can you mind she like, comes here for a second? I was like, sure, like, that's fine. And then it cuts to the, 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 they come to my house and they have like this little like moment, like they have like their first date in my living room or whatever. And I'm like doing stuff on the computer. Blah, blah, blah. And it got to find out when RC left the next day, she flew like a Patreon, and like, she's like a fan of ours, and she and she was like she had no idea who I was, so she came into my house, seeing me like, K -k -k -k. I'm like, hey girl, how you doing? And she, yeah, what? imagine if imagine if if you went to go visit um uh you went to go visit like Andrew somewhere, and he was like, yeah, I'm at my friend's place, I'm upset with a friend, and you walk in, and it's just Robin, Rihanna, Fenty, I like exactly. There. And she's like. Welcome. <laughs> oh my God. Me typing over here. <laughs> Don't mind me. Anyways, so I was like, so. She does have an accent. Uh, she does. Also, That's... yesterday, Monet, we were in this, we were in this podcast just saying Monet. What? We were doing. Oh, we were Our in meeting. The, in the, in the, in, yeah, this meeting for the, for the tour. In, but, what? Monet was trying to do something. And, oh God! And she was like, "We were trying to, we were trying to coach Monet through how to use the okay, computer." Okay, not coaching me. We're Google coaching Meet. Monet on how Google to use... Meet is is not the best platform. So then I logged in and everyone, they could, else, everyone else knew how to use this. And Monet. they couldn't hear me. Everyone else knew how to use that Monet. And then Monet was like, "What is down there?" She goes, "Down there by the gears." <laughs> and, and me and me and Marvin were like. Okay, what Marvin. Uh, Bob egged it on, and Mar which was making Marvin laugh. Marvin wasn't like, "Oh my god, I heard his thing." I said it, and Bob was like, "Monet, not busting that with the Jamaican." Marvin is real Jamaican. That's why Marvin was laughing. Because Mar Marvin is Marvin is our the the, the our director. director. He's he's from he's from the UK, but his folks are Jamaican. Jamaican. Yeah, and um and Monet busted out with the fucking patois yesterday, girl. Monet know, said, "Down there by the gears, girl." <laughs> I did not. Anyway, you think you said gears with a little bit of Caribbean accent? I maybe said. I but okay. Also, so when is my accent convenient for y'all? When I, I did, all, a, I have always said you have a Caribbean. I have never not said you don't. But have, when Jacob you're on the, the video, only one who said when you Jacob on the video, you said, "Uh, uh, Monet don't talk like that." Monet's putting on. Oh no, you okay? It's like I have a little bit of a southern twang, but if, but it'd be like if I went from this to talking like Eureka. If I was like, <laughs> "Girl, I don't even know y'all," which is like white southern, I would never talk like a white southern person. Girl, I don't y'all. I don't even know y'all. That's that, that's that Paula Dean white southerner uh, <laughs> talk, but I have a I have a slight little bit of southern twang in my voice versus sounding like Justin Caldwell <laughs> or my mother. Yeah, man. And uh, you were Robin Rihanna Fenty on that call yesterday. That's my queen. It girl, when you won Miss. <laughs> have you seen? Well, I did my entrance look for All Star Seven. They were like. Uh, I walked in and it goes, um, what did I say? What's my line? It looks like the exchange. It was like, looks like, no. So they oh, and, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, Monet changes, but they, they overdubbed it with as sweet as St. Lucia. I forgot what it is. <laughs> so you just walk in and go, looks like it is as sweet as St. Lucia. Lucia. Something like that. It's very funny. Whoever did it. Oh, we've had our four minutes up. Can I get my apology, please? I apologize to you if your feelings were hurt. When I said. Not an apology, <laughs> and I don't accept. Thank you so much for coming out. We'll see you on the next episode of Silver Rivalry. <laughs>